Hi Lee, tell us what you're up to these days. Uh, well, we're sitting here in the studio, uh, in the Sonic Youth studio. I've been making my new record out here. We just finished tracking the record uh, last week after sort of sporadic work on it over the last five or six months. Uh, tracked uh, nine or ten new songs and we're going to mix it next month in, in January. And um, So that's, that's the basic thing I've been up to right now. I've been making a new record with uh, all of my band members and some, some other special guests playing on it. And it's a bit of a departure for me production-wise. It's a much more produced record than the last couple ones that I've done have been, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, I'm going to go to Europe in, in a month, uh, solo acoustic. I've been doing a bunch of solo acoustic uh, dates these days, so I'm going to come to Europe for doing some solo acoustic shows uh, in about four weeks. And uh, then, then I'll uh, be assembling my band to come out and play the songs for the new record when, once, it's, uh, once it's released. So those are the main things I've been working on at the moment. That sounds awesome. Uh, so uh, when you work here in the studio, uh, do you have somebody to help you out? Or? Yeah, we have a, a couple different engineers that come in and, and work with us here. And uh, actually uh, three or four different engineers that, that are, are pretty savvy with this place uh, that, that come in and work with us. So um, yeah, we've got a few different people. And I work, I've been working with a, a guy from Spain as my producer. And when he's around, he's doing the engineering as well. And Raul Fernandez and uh, so we've been working together uh, on this new record for the last five or six months he comes over from Barcelona every like once a month and we work for two or three weeks and then he goes back and you know then we pick up again and um, so like I said we're just finished with the uh, the tracking and we're gonna mix it next month and I'm pretty excited about it at the moment so when you track how does it work uh, do you track everybody at the same time or is it like layering well, this record has been more one at a time and, and building things up in, in, on, on the tape or on the, on, in the computer. Uh, the last record I made was all uh, the whole band playing in this room. That's, that's kind of more normal for me. And this record is being done in a very uh, artificial way with a lot of click tracks and percussion samples and, and uh, just all kinds of sound and, and drum samples as well as live players. Uh, so you know this record has been started with I'll just come in here with my acoustic guitar and, and do it do it do the basic track of the song and then do a scratch vocal and then we're layering in first electronic beats and samples and then we're bringing the other players in one at a time and having them play over that and I'm of course playing more guitars and doing more singing and things like that and a bunch of other people are coming in and playing Nels Klein came in and played on some stuff and Steve Shelley's on a bunch of it and uh, oh, a bunch of other people Alan Licht Kid Millions. Uh, uh, Sharon Van Etten sings on a bunch of songs, and um, so it's being done in a very in the opposite of the way I usually make records, which is the whole band in this room mm. playing together. So you know, it's it's been a it's been a pretty great experiment at this point, which has been pretty cool. It's coming out really well. I really love the way it sounds. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about uh, the upcoming uh, acoustic tour before we turned on the camera, uh, and. Uh, the uh, high tuning, uh, yeah. which was uh, new for me to hear about. You yeah. want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, it's, it's this tuning that for a, a, a guitar, no, more mostly for acoustic guitars. I guess people do it with electrics too. It's called Nashville tuning or high strung tuning. And it's, uh, it's basically as though you took the high set of strings off a 12 string and put them on the guitar. So the, the four low strings, the E, A, D, G, are all an octave above normal. And then the, the top two strings are the same as normal. So it has a real sparkly, crisp sound, and it's, it's great layered in with a, a six-string acoustic. It just gives it this uh, real sparkly quality to it. And, and you'd be surprised at how many records have employed this uh, guitar tuning to give a little extra pizzazz, like things you wouldn't think of, like Iggy and the Stooges, or, or you know, the Rolling Stones have utilized it a lot, or, or Pink Floyd utilized it, but you know, all kinds of different people have done it. But, it pops up in some strange places, like on some hard rock songs of the Stooges' first couple records. There's high-strung tuning in some of those songs, and it really, uh, really makes it uh, have this very special quality. And I guess once you tune your ear into it, you, yeah. you suddenly uh, yeah, hear then it you start to notice it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. First, you think you're hearing a 12-string, and then you realize it's not as full-sounding as a 12-string, but it still has all that high-end sparkle, like a 12-string. So, how do you use it in your music? Well, I've been blending it in with a straight acoustic, yeah. uh, just to, to, to have a different kind of sound quality. So it comes and goes in different sections of the song and gives it a different, uh, different feel to it, really. 
Cool. Yeah. But uh, look forward for the album and see yeah. you out there on uh, the solo tour. As yeah. Well. Okay. Okay. Thanks okay. a lot.